because we still out of position. We still out of place too much. God wants us to get back in place. Get back in place and get back in the proper place. We're letting people put you in places that you ain't heard God. We make too many mistakes and putting people in place and calling people stuff that God had not called. Y'all ain't helping me up. This is y'all. They need to be shifted in the right place, in the right role. Y'all ain't messing with That's what happened to us. Us thought he was going to be do like the priests. And he said, I'm going to go in the holy place like the priests. And no matter what they try to say, he made it clear that he made the kings when they go in the holy place, they were the priests and they were the consecrated priests. We got too many people that are not consecrated trying to have the holy things. We got too many people that are not consecrated, not set aside trying to have the holy thing. He said, I'm going to do like the other priests. Because the book said when he became strong in his own heart, pride would lift it up. Come on, somebody. And no matter what they try to do to stop, he was still determined. I'm going into the temple. And nobody in the priest tried to get him out and try to stop. Come on, somebody. But he said, I'm going to act as the priest. I'm going to do that like they do. And that's what it is. I'm going to preach like he preached. Uh, I can set all that like he said. I can establish church like he y'all ain't having. I got the same. All right. There's a devil waiting for you. Come on, somebody. That's what happened to the Super Bowl. They saw Paul preaching. Y'all don't want nobody. And they said, I'll show you. Paul preached. Come out to me. The Spirit came out. But he didn't recognize. He said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But I don't recognize you because you don't have no authority. And the reason why you got no authority is because you won't submit to no authority. We won't enforce it, but we don't want to submit to it. So he said, I don't know who you are. Because demons recognize command from authority figures. Come on, so you try to command something, you're not even in authority. And that's the first thing he gave him was power and authority. Come on, somebody. They didn't try to preach and do nothing until they had the power and authority. You try to preach without power. Try to prophesy, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Now they have to be Try to lay hands on folks. Come on, somebody. And you ain't had nothing important into you yet. Y'all ain't have to be up in here. Come on, somebody. Right. Let's get back to God's way of being. So we can get God in his yeah, yeah, yeah. There's too much of people out of order. Yeah, out of place. Yeah, so yeah. They messing yeah. folks up. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. when folks yeah. told you who you were, yeah. but you yeah. weren't yeah. God, yeah. my sheep know my voice. Yeah. Yeah. And a stranger, yeah. they ain't gonna follow. Yeah. Yeah. We follow into their voices. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of voices yeah. Yeah. that claim to speak from God. See, like the sheep can't even hear them. Come on, sir. Because you got to know the difference between sheep and goat. Yeah, yeah. Amen, somebody. Because see, a, a sheep, they ain't going to listen, but a goat going to continue to kick against. Just kick against everything. Kick against the order, kick against everything that's in place. Come on, somebody. Amen. But he's a God of order. The book of Acts, real quickly. I'm going to let you know. The ninth chapter. Very familiar text, and I'll give you, let you out of here a good time. And, but we have an apostle, and what God is doing, and this great ministry, and the vision God has given him, and it's a blessing to have visionaries, and God sent you to embrace and help the vision come to pass. Amen. Because he done wrote it down, you done saw it. Time for you to carry out. Y'all help me. But we get too stuck, we get too comfortable. We get too complacent. Yes. Never seen too many people that stagnate. Yes. See, when you're stagnated, you're showing no signs of activity. Not right. Not right. When something is stagnated, on, it's not moving. That's right. That's right. 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 Come on. Right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Because you're saying something when you're moving. Right. You can be up doing a lot of stuff, but don't mean you're moving. Right. Don't mean you're progressing. Right. See, when you stagnate, you'll come to a complete. I'm going to stop. You ain't moving. And God is anything God is, is constant moving. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how you say God is in you and you ain't moving? Right, yeah. See, moving ain't you getting up here and do what you do, singing and whatever you're doing. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not really moving. Right. 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 
Come on, sir. Moving is going out in the hedges and in the highways and compelling for Amen. So, so we will say we got the Holy Ghost. We don't never witness. And you shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost. And you shall be what? Young boy. So God want us to move. The church has been so stagnant because of the mentality we have. We have the mentality that's all we want to be stuck in the walls. But that's not the real ministry. The ministry has always beyond the four walls. Am I right? Amen. So it's always he had that 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 great commission was to go the out and compel. See, the compelling me. You have a level of influence. Yeah, yeah. So see, God don't send nobody out that don't have influence. Come on now. Come on. Amen. Right. Amen. I mean, why would he send you out to evangelize? Huh. And you're an evangelist and you have no influence. Right. Come on now. Come on. Because see, evangelists are supposed to go out to bring in. Bring them in. Yeah. Not to start their own work. Oh, oh man. Oh, right. Because when oh, Philip, oh. let me give you a scripture like you get mad at me right there. <laughs> Philip went to a. Samaritan. He went yeah. where he was ordered to go sit. Uh -huh. Didn't he do that? Yeah. He went in Jezebel territory. Yeah. He went in places that, that sources and, and witchcraft would be yeah. practiced. Right, right. right. And Simon had the people be witch. Yeah. Yeah. Sure they was messed up. And they thought that he was the great power of God. Because uh -huh. yeah. he had them be witch. He had them yeah. trick. Come yeah. on, somebody. Because there was no move in that reason. Come on now. Amen, somebody. Come so on. Simon was the only one thing they, they thought was close to God. Because of what the miracles that he would perform, the things he would do. And they thought he was a great power of God from the youngest to the old. But Philip went down there. And Philip was no apostle. Philip was no prophet. He was just a man evangelist that stayed in the upper room, stayed up the place. He didn't need to play the same Philip within the place of rule. He stayed in the holy place. He stayed in the place of Salah, the place of peace. He stayed in the place that he was all in the go. He didn't leave that place till he received something. Because if he would have if he would left before he received what were promised him, he would have had that type of fact when he would have different reasons. And see, sometimes we wonder why we ain't have the type of fact that we should have because we leave too quick. The Lord told you to stay there, to tarry there, wait there, don't leave that place until you be endowed with power from O.I. Because you can't deal with demons and devils. You can't deal with what the enemy is trying to do when you're out here without any power. You just got a gift. You just got a talent. But you don't have no power. You don't have no anointing. The push what you have. You got to have it for real. If you're going to deal with what's about to come up on the record, you ain't just preaching. You're dealing with demons and devils. Because he gave the power of an unclean spirit. Y'all don't want to have no church. So Philip stayed right there. He stayed there. He stayed right in place. He stayed what he was ordered and demanded to go. He stayed right there with 120 of them. Come on, son. Because, amen, what he told them, he said, because they was asking when he going to restore Israel. He, he said, it ain't for you to know the times of the season that he put in the fall that you shall receive. Because he didn't want them to focus on the kingdom because they didn't have the revelation of it. He wanted them to focus on what he promised them that they were going to have. See, you focus on everything else that ain't focused on what he promised you're going to have. He trying to give you something that's going to call your ministry to really be authentic. That's going to call your ministry to really be effective. See, you got to have something if your ministry is going to be really effective. So they say, let me give them a text. They stay right there. And then they leave right there. They stay in the upper room. They stay right there in place. And in the midst of staying there, amen, they was waiting there. But they were still doing something while they waited. They didn't stop doing something while they were waiting. So you waiting on something to happen. You waiting on somebody to open the door for you. But you ain't preparing yourself. 
God help me. You you're waiting on another preacher to give. You waiting on a come on somebody. You waiting on another big conference. You waiting on somebody to call. Y'all ain't saying amen. But you ain't doing nothing in the process of waiting for God. See, they weren't just there waiting, doing nothing. They were preparing themselves through prayer, through seeking God. Come on, until He released us when He promised it. And some of us, we think we're ready for the world. We come and we prophet to the nation. You ain't even prophet to Dallas. How you gonna be prophet to the nation? And you ain't perfect Dallas yet. If you gonna be a prophet to the nation, look like you're perfect Dallas, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. They call to the nation. Call to do this. You ain't even having no effect in the reason that he'll put you in. Y'all ain't having me up in here. That's why he said you should be witness in Judas, Samaria, and the other most part of the world. Y'all ain't having me. You can't, you can't bypass all that. It just to the world. So in the midst of them waiting, what was promising you? Yes, sir. Wrong, there was a process between the call and the sending. Somebody said preparation. And preparation is important. Because the bad, the worst thing to do is have people out there saying God is calling them to do stuff and then they're preparing. Starting churches and, and preaching and, and misquoting the scriptures. Come on, tell us to go, amen, to Acts, and there you are in Matthew. Tell us to go somewhere, and you don't know how to get there yourself. Preparation. Preparation is important. And when God wants his minister, he says that, amen, go be preaching, amen, we'll do whatever God calls you. He wants you to prepare yourself. Study the Bible. And see, you don't study the preach, you study to show yourself a preach. Because God is changed. He's not really changed. He'll change it. Come on, somebody. And that's why you got to prepare yourself. Because God speaks according to the atmosphere what he wants to say in the house. Amen. Yes. We ain't really talking to God. So you can tell when preaching and when people are preaching whether God is talking. Because you can preach, don't mean God is talking. Because most of us get a message off the internet or books, y'all ain't me. Because we don't put no time in prayer. We don't put no time in fashion. When you pray and say, God will download you. He'll speak to you. You don't have to get no man's book and get no man's revelation of what they are saying. What is God saying to you? Preacher, what is God saying to you? Try for a minute. What is it saying to you? You got to get on your face and pray and say and seek God and let God download you to what he want to say to his people. But when we start seeking God, when it comes to the people, God. because y'all ain't our people, y'all God's people. That's what we got to always look at. Come on. And God knows what his people need. And what God people need now is, is restoration. They need healing. They need to be peeled up. They need hope again. Come on, son. Because, see, when you build people, you build ministry. You can never build a strong ministry when you got people that's torn down. Come on, somebody. And that is the anointed in the assignment he's given us. It's to perfect. We as apostles, we are to perfect. Amen. The saints. Somebody said we got to perfect them. Build them up. Get them to a place of maturity. He wants you to be mature in this thing. Somebody said maturity. Let me get back to it. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. Amen. So when he did God, when he did God, he, he told them he stayed there in the place that they was ordered to go. Because the command was, the order was, is to go up in the upper room and stay there. Stay in prayer. I hear the Lord say, stay in prayer. Stay in that place of consecration. Stay in that place of order. Stay in that place of holiness. Stay in that place. Don't leave. That's why I went to Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the holy place. The place of Salah. The place of peace. Don't leave that place. But stay there. Because what he going to do, he going to do it there. And if you don't say there, we going to promise you. He ain't going to release it. He ain't going to leave. But he promised you. He ain't got a place. 
place when he left the place that he told you to go there. Yes. He had a reason why he told you to go there. Y'all yes, are helping me right there. Well. Now, why would God promise you something? Uh, and then he tell you where he's going to release it. And then, for whatever reason, come on, somebody, you decide to leave the place that he promised you. And then you wonder why the promise don't never show up. Come on, somebody. Because, amen, that ain't where he was going to release it at. He gave you a particular place that he was going to see you. If you don't believe it, he told the prophet to go to the brook. And he said, as long as you have the brook, I have commanded a raven. I've already gave the raven the unclean bird to feed you down. As long as you're down, you're going to have bread in the morning. You're going to have fish in the evening. As long as you're down, amen. He said the brook will be able to offer you water. But when the brook dry up, you see God don't want nobody to and church it, that them dried up. I don't care how good you preach it. If the church it, them dried up, ain't no water, ain't no flow, ain't no anointing, ain't no power, ain't no way 